All right, so we are on target A, and we are doing operations with complex numbers. Uh, learning goals for this lesson, so by the end, you should be able to do all of this. I can add or subtract expressions with complex numbers, multiply expressions with complex numbers, use patterns to make simplifying complex numbers easier, and describe and correct errors observed in simplifying expression. Okay, so let's start off with some vocabulary since some of that probably didn't make sense already. Complex number, that is a combination of a real number, which you should be aware of because we've been working with them all semester and all of your life, and an imaginary number, which you have not worked with before. An imaginary number, to explain what that is, that's uh, a number that when squared gives a negative result, and we write it as i, which represents the square root of negative one, so you could say i equals square root of negative 1. And we use that because remember, you cannot have, with real numbers, you can't have a square root of a negative number. So this allows us to do that. All right, so here's a visual explanation of like adding and subtracting. So a number line goes left to right, okay, like so. So imagine that your imaginary numbers go up, down, okay? like this. So now it kind of looks like a coordinate plane. So if I gave you this, forget about this for a second. Okay, we'll come back to that. If I gave you this right here, you could think of this as like an x coordinate and a y coordinate. So we'd have 3 and then 4i, which would be right there. And then we would be adding 1 minus 2i. So you add your constants together and your imaginary numbers together. So 3 plus 1 is 4, so we'd be going further to the right. And then we'd be subtracting 2i, so we'd be going down. And that would be a kind of our new spot at 4 plus 2i. Or, so that's just a visual representation. This is a more traditional way of doing it. Um, I would suggest grouping your numbers. So you have your constants, and then you have your imaginary numbers. Don't forget the sign to the left of it. Put them together. 3 plus 1 is 4. 4i minus 2i is just 2i. All right, so simplify the following expression. We have negative 12 plus 9i plus the quantity negative 6 plus 3i. So this is just addition or subtraction. We have this in between, which means realistically we, can, we don't have to worry too much about the parentheses. It's a positive, so really we can just get rid of the parentheses if we want to. Um, but again, I would suggest grouping, so negative 12 plus negative 6, and then 9i plus 3i. Okay, so negative 12 and negative 6 gives us negative 18, 9i plus 3i, 12i. So notice we're treating this just like we would a variable, as if it were like 9x plus 3x. That would be 12x, right? Same thing. The trick comes when we start getting the powers of that. All right. Again, simplified expression, this is addition or subtraction. So now we just can't remove the parentheses. We actually have to distribute this negative sign to both terms inside. All right, so when we do that, it's going to become, we've still got the 5 plus 3 out in front, but this negative side becomes negative 10 minus 8i. So now we can lose the parentheses. Again, take the numbers and the sign to the left of them. Okay, so we have a 5 and a negative 10. And 3i minus 8i, 5 minus 10 is negative 5, 3i minus 8i is negative 5i, so we have negative 5 minus 5i for your answer. Now when you're multiplying complex numbers, eventually you will end up multiplying by the power of i. Okay, some power of i by another power of i. For example, if you had i times i, that would be i squared, right? Because I said we're treating this like as if we had variables, and x times x is x squared. So yes, that's absolutely true. However, unlike as if it were x squared, where we would just leave it as x squared, with i we have kind of a different scenario once we get into the powers of i. Okay, The first four powers can be written a specific way, and after that the pattern keeps repeating. So for example, i and i to the fifth, or we could say i to the first, okay, because they're the same thing, would be written the same way. So here's the pattern. i to the first power, that's just i i squared is negative 1. Because remember I said that i is the square root of negative 1. So if you have the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, the square root 
um, you get rid of that square root and you're left with just negative 1. Okay, i to the third power is negative i. So again, same thing. You can think of this as uh, square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. Again, so the square root symbols cancel out. So you have negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. Well, we don't want that because we can't have the square root, so we just write it as i. A negative 1 times i is negative i, and so on and so forth. So you can kind of justify how you get to here. Okay, so now that you kind of have those rules, what you do is once you get past 4 and you go back over to the i to the fifth power, it repeats itself. Okay, so what you can do, uh, there'll be a shortcut that I'll show you in a little bit that you can kind of use to uh, figure out um, what i to any power is quickly. Okay, so when we multiply complex numbers that have a real and an imaginary number as part of it, you do the exact same thing as when you multiply two binomials together. You use FOIL. Yay, FOIL's back. All right, the only thing you need to be careful of is when you're rewriting your, anything that has an I in it um, that's greater, that is to a power greater than 1, you need to be aware of what we just went through. So, for example, we have 2 plus 4I times the quantity, or times the difference of 3 and i. So we use FOIL. So don't forget, we have our box, okay? First, outer, inner, last. All right, so we've got our first terms, 2 and 3, 2 times 3. We've got our outside terms, 2 and negative i. Then we have our inside terms, 4i and 3. And then we have our outside terms, 4i and negative i. So when we multiply 2 times 3, we get 6. When we multiply 2 times negative i, we get negative 2i. When we multiply 4i times 3, we get 12i. When we multiply 4i times negative i, we get negative 4i squared. This is what I said you need to be careful of. So that i squared is going to become negative 1, remember? Because i squared equals negative 1. So now we have negative 4 times negative 1, because remember it was 4 negative 4i, which means negative 4 times i. So negative 4 times negative 4 is 4. We add our constants. So 6 plus 4, we add our imaginary numbers, 12i minus 2i, and we get 10i plus 10i, or 10 plus 10i. Okay, determine what i to the 26th power is. Describe the pattern you use to arrive at your solution. All right, here's where I show you the shortcut. Easiest way to solve this problem is take your power of i, so in this case 26, divide it by 4. Why 4? Well, if we go back, remember we had different things for i, for i squared, for i to the third, and then for i to the fourth. Okay, and then it repeated itself. So if we divide by 4, we can keep coming back to this original thing here. Whatever's left over is what it'll be um, the same as being raised to the power. So, for example, i to the 26. We take 26, we divide it by 4, which is 6. That has a remainder of 2. This is what we're looking for, whatever the remainder is. All right, so we use i squared to get our answer of because the remainder of 2 becomes i squared, negative 1. Nice and simple. Last example, describe and correct the error made in simplifying the expression to minus 6i times the sum of 2 and 6i. So again, we use FOIL. Or you remember your rules about multiplying by things that are exactly the same except for their middle operation. So you, if you do, you're going to remember that this is going to cancel out the 12i and the negative 12i. Gone. Bye-bye. Okay, here's the thing. When we do this, Negative 6i times positive 6i is negative 36i. They did a positive. All right? So, yes, this will still cancel out, but that changes the whole problem when you carry it all the way through. See, because this becomes 4 plus 36, and you might be trying to figure out how. If we take negative 36 times i squared. i squared, remember, is this is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, which is just negative 1. So i squared is negative 1. So negative 36 times negative 1 is a positive 36. So that gives you 40. So the error was in the sign of the last term of the second line. And that's all there is to it. 
So if you can just go back and memorize like the I to the first, second, third, and fourth power, and then just remember the quick way of doing it, you should have no problems. I mean, really, um, other than that, the rest of it's all stuff that you've done before. So that's all I got for you. You guys have a lovely day. Ask if you have any questions.